we're talking all about our cell phones and the future of generative AI and devices. And that means how smartphones, well, how they're evolving, literally in the palm of our hands. So joining us to break it all down is Lisa Edichico, Senior Editor at CNET. Good morning, Lisa. So although the word is spreading about artificial intelligence, we're really only seeing a limited application for our phones, like editing tools. Are there any examples of phones going beyond that right now? So I think like you mentioned, where we're really starting here is seeing these one-off features like photo editing, language translation, things like that. But you have to remember this industry is moving really fast. A year ago, we weren't even really talking about generative AI on smartphones yet. So I think in the future, we're going to see generative AI play a bigger role in how you use your phones. And one way we're kind of seeing that today is a feature called Circle to Search. So as the name implies, you just hold down the home button on your phone and you can circle almost anything on your screen to automatically launch a Google search about that product or item. So it's a small feature. It's something that people might use occasionally right now. But I think that idea of having your phone kind of intelligently analyze what's on screen to help you out, I think that trend is going to be something that we see a lot in the future. Well, we can see glimpses of what it can do, but when it comes to a foundational level, what do you think generative AI has the power to do for our phones? Of course, so it's hard to say exactly what's going to happen in the future. A lot of companies like Apple and Google and Samsung are pretty secretive about the technology that they're working on. But what I think, in my personal opinion, I think that the rise of generative AI is just going to make it a lot easier for our phones to do things for us. I think it'll mean a lot less of jumping in between apps and having to bounce from one app to another just to get something done. You know, you think about today, if you're posting a picture from a concert, for example, you probably have the camera app open and maybe you're editing that photo in another app and then you're posting it on social media. I think the rise of generative AI will make it easier to have your phone help you do those things without having to bounce between so many apps. So again, it's hard to say exactly what's in store, but that seems to be the trend that the industry is likely moving in. Well, with the news that Apple could be partnering up with Google to incorporate, incorporate generative AI into our phones, that really begs the question here, when are we going to see this kind of integration actually pick up? Yeah, absolutely. So I think it's going to continue to move fast. Like I said, a year ago, we weren't even talking about this. Now we're seeing it on new Samsung phones, new Pixel phones. And we do have Google's IO developer conference coming up next month. So we're probably going to hear more about generative AI on smartphones then. Right after that in June, we have Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference, where the company is expected to make some announcements around generative AI, and it'll likely unveil how it's going to tie that technology into the iPhone. So I do think, you know, as early as later this year, we're going to see more advancements in this space. All right. Thank you, Lisa. We're looking forward to it.